Hey everybody, welcome to another AI Class video. Ed is here and this is the video you guys have been waiting for. We are going to be releasing the workflow for our um, Clonavine factory version two. And we've been working hard to try and get this done. And essentially, if you remember back to clothing factory version one, you're able to add different clothing to your model and generate um, the articles of clothing based on photos. But as you know, it didn't come out right. It didn't match the source image. It didn't match the source image at all. <clears throat> and it was just like way off. So we tested out a bunch of nodes and we came across one node uh, that allowed us to do this and we work it into our workflow. So quickly, I have the workflow here. Again, if you want to just jump to the download, we will supply this workflow for free. Our Moodle drive, just go ahead and click on a download link and uh, make sure you update company UI, open up, load the workflow and install any of the same custom nodes you may not have. So this is the workflow in a nutshell. Here's the far view. This area is our upscale and enhancer part. Um, as you know, we, we created an upscale enhancer to try and mimic the um, magnetic and we've been tagging it on, on end of our, all of our workflows. So the meat and potatoes are right here. Not that many nodes guys. It's not that hard. Um, so for, we have a checkpoint working with, of course, Epic Real was a natural sin SD one fine. Um, and here is the node. Magic clothing. Magic clothing is the best clothing, custom clothing, AI generated node out there. It is the best. And we worked hard to try and get this to run correctly with settings and diff trying different things. And it, we think we found something good. So the magic clothing model node is our theory. You have to download these models and put them in the magic clothing into the unit files of your models file. Models folder, um, there's an adaptive crop with mask and it has it to encode and then you add magic clothing attention. That's also a node that goes in there. Positive and negative prompts. Uh, of course, in them to wait and and we do code. Now this is what we did. We added an open codes section right here, control mat. So you can input an image and it will obviously take the pros of that image into the final, final image. You're using control SD15 open pose model. The next thing we're doing, we're storing all that into a face swapped reactor node. Now this is going to be the face swap. So you can actually swap the face of her model with any face you want. We did try this with face ID IP adapter, which we would have preferred, but we ran into a lot of problems with that. And reactor was just always been a very reliable and it's a fast way to do it. And you would have to download the onyx file model files and everything that comes with we add her face swap. Okay, and then from there, it'll create the image. Now all this stuff, again, like I said, all this is your upscale and enhancer portion. You can enter portion. You can bypass it if you want by selecting all these nodes and hitting control B, or you can keep it going. So let's see how this works. So let's take an article of clothing, right? So let's take this, um, let's take this, this shirt. Now this is from our favorite designer, R13 Clothing. You guys want to check them out. Uh, on mine, they have a lot of great designs and clothes up there. <clears throat> so normally if we put this through our clothing factory or flow, this would be a gar garbled up. The text would not come up, come up like that. Okay, so this is the image and it was our goal to try and come up with something that didn't garble the text or even garble up the, 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 the garment. 
It removed the background. This is the open pose. Blanca, of course, and this is Blanca again as the face swapped. So here is the first iteration of that. This is going to be the first iteration that's going to go through our upscale and enhance or give us an image right here. So that looks pretty good already. Good text. Don't grow up. It's a trap. Again, it is pretty on spot. Name of the face is a little bit different, but it looks pretty good. It's fairly close. You got the sleeveless part right and the shredding of the bottom of the clothes. Her hands are screwy, but that's AI. And once it goes to our upscale enhancer, it's going to correct some of the uh, blurriness and she's hair in her face for some reason. All right, here's the final outcome through our upscale and enhance her workflow 2304 by 372. Put Blanca's face in there and the chirp sweater is there and it's pretty spot on to the original. You couldn't do that with another holding. It would really tear up the text. And, you know, we wanted to make sure you guys know this point of this workflow was to make sure in a graphics text, then a design on clothing stay true to what it is. Stay true to the source. The clothing itself may change. It may turn a sleeveless into a tank top and may turn a long sleeve into a short sleeve. That can be easily corrected with crompting, but we wanted to make sure that none of these graphics and text and logos and stuff gets warped because that's a big turnoff to a lot of these clothing. Portflows. All right. So this is a t-shirt. We're going to try it out on. This is a Gucci University t-shirt. This was downloaded actually from your Gucci website. Every day, we're actually selling a t-shirt like that for about $600 or so. Um, I am going to have another open pose. I guess let's the this. It's Blanca again. And I'll use a different islands blocker. Why not? The Q prompt, and then we're gonna see what it does with this. Now you're writing on my prompt. This my prompt is a full wrap of a model wearing a foot that is wrong, and learning a t-shirt. Okay, wearing a t-shirt, best quality, sharp focus, and negative is bad anatomy low. Quality and I'm going to also put on safe for work as well. So let's see what this comes up with. And again, the goal of this workflow is to keep the graphics the same. Again, I'm not worried about the shirt because I did see some people complaining. Oh, I thought the same garb, I thought the same clothes, but it's not the same shirt. Well, yes, it's not going to be exactly the same, the shirt itself, but the Logo in the design is what we want it to keep. So there is the original and here is the shirt on her and it's Bucci University. It's all warbly over there because of the, maybe because of the open pose, but it stays pretty much true to that. Even the flags. And if you can see the design in the middle of B, middle of the little logo there. Uchi made in Italy, Italy. I don't know if it's going to get that small text. Good not. But again, you can regenerate it. See what it comes up with. It puts her in white jeans because I think it's influenced by the white dress. Like you can always prompt for, for the model or something else if you want to. And let's just see if in a pog. Okay, so this is a t-shirt, guys. T-shirt, ping image, no background, right? So I'm going to select the subject first in Photoshop. We're in Photoshop now. And I'm going to have it select the shirt for me. And it did. And then we're actually going to change the color by going to human saturation. Click on colorize. 
and it's allowing me to change the color. So I can do a green, I can do a orange, what is this, a purple, a red. Let's do a green and boost saturation. Pick it a little wider. There. So I did that. I want to save this as shirt. I have a lot of shirts. Shirt 20. So what we're going to do, we are going to put a logo on here. This is all you see. So let's QB Lego. Lolo logo. You guys are familiar with this, right? So I'm just going to select be outside and then I'm going to select inverse to actually select below though. Copy, go here, and then I'm going to paste this. Oh, let's dig right onto the shirt. And this is how you guys can make your own custom shirts. So let's make it, let's blink right up there. It's pretty good. And then I'm going to lower the opacity down to about 68. So it blends more a little bit with the shirt. And also you can mess with the, um, the, uh, <clears throat> the, uh, what do you call this? But the layers here, so you can see what kind of point we get. Screen is usually good. And you know what? Let's go with screen on this one. Read the opacity a little bit. There, screen, it makes it look more screen printed. So we're gonna flatten this, and then we're going to save this as shirt 22. Okay, so that's gone. And you made a custom shirt, I and mean, then you can make this any shirt you want. So let's go back to comp you want. We're going to put that shirt in. It gets right here. There's a shirt. Um, let's change the pose to this. Let's do this pose. And let's change the face to another face. Don't have any. Do I have another face? I do not know. Um. Let's grab two. Let's grab Sydney Sweeney. Let's do this one. American actress. So we have all that down. The prompt is should be wearing a t-shirt and I'm going to cue prompt for that. And again, you can use the prompts to kind of mold and shape what you want to do. This is what I'm talking about. There are going to be some hallucinations by this. It's not going to be perfect, no matter how bad you want it to be. But here is the final output for before the outskill enhancer. And it got the shirt right. And it brought the shirt up a little bit over the belly button. Um, but there's this strip of beige, which is not in the original shirt. And but it's showing up here. And she's in underwear, so I don't know if you want to get rid of that. But again, the Lado part looks good. The color of the shirt looks good. And it's actually going to look even better. Um, here's the Uggskill and half version with Sydney Swing's face. Her hand is huge, but this gave it a lot tet more texture, a lot of contrast, and brought the face in. So no, this is not going to be perfect. It's not going to work every time. The success rate of this is about 60-40. 60% out of the time it's worked, 40% of it did not. So if you try it, you have to generate an experiment. You know, you can't just say, oh, this doesn't work after doing a couple of times. You have to try because as with any workflow, it's still experimental and there's still some bugs we need to fix. So we're going to try some few different things here. Okay, we actually changed that um, image. It was starting to throw up a throw up. It's starting to screw up. I relaunched Comfy Wide. I chose the dripping image. Again, with some pretty good amount of detail on there. Some sweater. I changed the model to Cyber Realistic Revamp version 32 with Destiny 1 Fig. And this is what I came up with. Pretty good. I mean, it's a little off. I mean, the sleeves it interpreted white sleeves, not the black. 
but the graphics you can clearly see the win and you can see the peace sign and it's you know even that awkward hand let's see the design on your shirt it's there it's their faces kind of garbles but again the majority of that design is of the shirt and that's a win for us get it um yeah so i want you to play with this guys that i can go through examples all day long i had abigail on here trying this out and she her eyes started to bleed so she had the stuff but let us know what you think anybody who can improve this um you know any coiners or what outcomes you come up with and make sure you like and subscribe to AI Fuzz. We will be keep trying to improve these workflows, revisit them, and also let you know what um, works and what doesn't. For this one, guys, remember it doesn't work with if there's actually faces on your on your shirt. Like I did one of Michael Scott on there, and it didn't work. It doesn't work well with smaller text. Um, big that gets jumbled up. Uh, it doesn't work well with um, some animals. Like you have a shirt of animals. It depends. You know, you have to really try it out and let us know. But I definitely know those things it does not work with. Uh, so make sure you like and subscribe, guys. And I will see you back on another AI Fuzz video.